If it's 11 a.m. Eastern time, it's LinkedIn Live, Hour of Empower. Today's keyword or word of the day is connecting. Uh, I'm so honored and blessed again to have uh, Kelly with us and Beverly. Uh, what a great pairing. Uh, just, just from our interest in serving, bringing value, hopefully getting you some wonderful takeaways that you can actually take action with. Uh, chat's open, so feel free. We really depend on chat to be as relevant as we can and answer as many of your questions that you might have. And always interested in knowing what your definition of connecting is. So with that said, I'll bring Kelly on and Kelly can bring you a little quickly up to date. And also I'll talk about her initial thoughts on connecting. Yeah, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you're tuning in from. Um, yeah, it's so great to be here. And I, I know I say that all the time because it always is. Um, and I love when I get to spend some extra time with Beverly, who I recently connected with. And I will say it works perfectly into this topic today because we connected fast, I will say. Uh, yes, definitely. I, I think in life, and I've said this before, I think on a show about friendship, uh, we, we don't find friends necessarily. I believe we, we recognize them and you just see it sometimes. So uh, that was me and Beverly, and I'm so grateful I got to connect with her. So yeah, great to be here today and talking about this topic, because I think it can go in so many directions. Um, and I think there's so many things, obviously, that apply with LinkedIn, uh, and, and how many rights and wrongs there are with connecting through LinkedIn. Uh, but my post this morning, I, I think how I put it, the the, the phrase that I used was, the best way to connect with someone is to listen. Mm. Um, and I'm like, God, that's so true. I mean, which is why I used it. Um, <laughs> because I do think it's one of those things in life that when we, we finally become the active listener, if you will, um, that we're like, man, you learn so much when you sit back and just listen to someone. But mm. then Conversely, it's the greatest gift you can give to someone is when you're giving them your undivided attention and really listening because they feel that and there's a connection in that. Um, so which I think is beautiful. And it's just something I think everybody needs to be reminded of and particularly on, on LinkedIn and in business. And we've all seen this when we're talking to someone, sharing our point of view, sharing our idea, whatever it is. And the person you're talking to or group of people you're talking to, you can actually watch them like calculating how they're going to reply and they're not really paying attention to the words coming out of your mouth. Like that's so annoying. Um, but it's part of life. I mean, I've, I've been that person, uh, especially in business, because I thought, oh, I got to be ready to reply <laughs> instead of sitting back and listening. So those are my initial thoughts on connecting, and I definitely have many more. So it'll be interesting to see what the audience brings in. So uh, Beverly, my one of my newest connections, actually, as far as like truly being a connection, and we we talk outside of work, and I've done a podcast with her, which you all need to check out. Um, so I will toss it over to you, my good friend connection, <laughs> Beverly. Well, you took a lot of words right out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, Kelly and I made this instant connection. Yeah. It was just like, I know this person. And mm -hmm. that's what connecting is really all about. And it's, we make these judgments. These judgments come so fast. And you can tell from anyone that's gone, say, speed dating. If anyone knows anything about that, right? You <laughs> could say, <laughs> okay, right? That is when we just sit around a room, apparently, and don't get me wrong, don't, I have not been speed dating ever, okay? Maybe. And when you think of this, right? You think of all these, say, men sitting around the room or women sitting around the room, and you have about a couple of seconds to see whether you want to connect with those people. And if you do, you just sit down and before you know it, you can ask them for a date or whatever it is. I don't know. What the bottom line is, what we do is when you look at that and say, that's ridiculous, but we make judgments so quickly and yep. we know immediately 
whether we can connect with that person or whether we can't. We judge. We need that. We need to be able to save ourselves from making mistakes. And often we do make mistakes because we can judge very wrongly. Yeah. However, with you, Kelly, yes, right on. The connection was yeah. just there. And we can fall into those kind of traps too, particularly online, mm -hmm. where we think we know somebody, but we really don't. And we think we are connected with those people because in our heads, we feel that they are thinking exactly what I'm thinking, but they may not be. So this is where in business or in life, business is life, isn't it? I mean, the same kind of things go on in our lives as it does go on in business. But what we have to always do is know that we do have to listen and we do have to ask. Because the connection that we may think we have may not be there on the other side. And that is just so very important because we make our connections in a heartbeat. Oh, I like that person. Oh, I think that person will make a great friend. And then you can link on to that and be really hurt. Yeah. And the reverse is true. You can just discount them. So the same thing here, Dawn, when you put this wonderful platform together, where everybody has the opportunity to make connection. That yeah. is fantastic. We get to know other people through this wonderful community that keeps on coming in, same people. And when different people come in, that's even, that's even better because we get to know new people and it keeps growing. And that's what connection is. We all need to connect. We also have to have our little spidey senses going. Thank yes. you know. <laughs> we have to watch this. <laughs> Sometimes we can get very great. So on to you, Don. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know. Be another, great connector. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you two ladies have uh, shared would be enough for a show as far as takeaways. And what, what I'm realizing, especially doing this show every day for a long time, is um, to your speed dating uh, example. <laughs> if you have to make a judgment in a few seconds, you're usually going to be basing it on what you were looking for. Yeah. Right. And probably who you are, because you want to see somebody who looks like you and matches up superficially or physically or visually. But I think what Kelly said also, which was so true, which is the beauty of listening. Mm -hmm. And with a format like this, you get to watch, listen before you even have to talk, right? Yeah. And it follows that buy some vowels before you solve the puzzle because, <laughs> uh, you know, Beverly's right. Some people, they don't show well immediately, mm -hmm. right? Their first impression doesn't benefit them and other people they can't lose if all you did was base it on what you just saw for the first time yeah but it's really what's deeper that becomes more richer and more beautiful for a relationship because how do people respond how do people communicate yeah well if you're going to have a relationship having somebody that's responsive and focused on what you're saying and who you are and in turn, trying to give more mm -hmm. uh, so they can get more. You know, it, it, you know it's, it's selfishly unselfish that you can set a higher bar for giving with someone, yeah. for exploring how deep you can reach somebody and be reachable. And I think when you look for those relationships, you, you use the superficial as one of the last characteristics right? That could make a difference between which way and how much of a way you take. But again, I think it's all evaluation. And with shows like this, anything that's repetitive, because I'm thinking to myself, in my whole life, how many people do I talk to every day in person or by video? And how often do I do it? And people say this can be a chosen family, which it is, versus just a blood family. 
but this I, I have more interactions, more conversations, and see these people every day almost. We're a family, you catch a phone call once a month, maybe a visit every six months. Mm -hmm. And that's really the key to connecting is who are your connections? You know, and my connections is anybody I'm actually interacting with at this point, right? If it's like you picked an army and you said, I'm going to pick these 40 and we're going to leave everybody back on the shelf. And now what can we do as 40? Because how many 40s are operating? together. And I mean together, not just for, for some purpose that may not always be uh, the benefit to everybody. And I think that's what goodness and integrity bring. So before I switch it back to Kelly, let's go through some of these comments, because I think this is the best listening you can do, or is for the people who actually take the time, take the thought and the effort to not only share what is important to them, but what they believe could be important to other people around them. Yeah. I connect, need some data lines. Carrie's always got that <laughs> whimsical humor. <laughs> Chris, good morning. Looking forward to connecting. Debbie, who's just been fantastic with her whole butterfly uh, oh, yeah. presentation. I think that is so quality. Uh, yeah. Debbie says, let's see if I can leave comments. Good day, indeed. Uh, one year, eight months, no coffee or no camping. <laughs> I'd, say, yeah, I, I'd say you're there already. Uh, <laughs> you can the finish line and, and, and consider yourself a winner. Connecting is more than just a formality of a click of a button. Yes. I have met and connected some people who have become my best friends through this platform because they've shown themselves without any legacy or background who they are. And, you know, everybody has to earn their stripes every day. Yeah. You know, all it takes is a bad, bad something in a, in a wrong way and everything you have will just disappear. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really good because it builds responsibility and accountability and nobody should take anybody for granted. And I think some relationships, it's just assumed mm -hmm. that no one really would choose, but it just morphed into it. Uh, the best way to connect with someone is to listen, for sure. Listening is learning. Empathetic listening is crucial, so true. Uh, okay, hoping to connect with someone. I'm donating more platelets today. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Hey, people. Uh, Elizabeth is here. Elizabeth is just great, too. Had some great, really great appearances. Hope to have yeah. Elizabeth back. Uh, Kristen comes back with... Uh, I'm open to connect, and this is about connecting. Take this opportunity. Yes. Out. I give everybody permission. Uh, Kelly, yes. we haven't connected yet. Well, I we have. I think we did last week, Maria. I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure I sent you a connection request, and we did. But great. I'll do it. great. <laughs> uh, Sheaf is here from Canada. A lot of Canadians. Yes. Let's do it. Uh, back to Maria. You too, Elizabeth. Uh, did she say e-dating or speed dating? I think it was speed dating. <laughs> e-dating could be a whole other thing. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's where listening and watching make a bigger difference. What's the topic today again? Uh, connect. Connecting. And uh, Maria, I'm ready to connect as well. Great. Christy is okay. here. Christy's just a wonderful individual. I can't, can't have a show without... Uh, really promoting the awesome journey with Christy and Kelly, Tuesdays, 1, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern time, following this show and Harvey. So you got a triple decker there if you got the time. Uh, it's, it's not a judgment, it's intuition. Christy yeah. comes back with, on when we think of someone who we are connecting with and they have a mask on, which eventually slips off. Yeah, I would say time will either expose you or promote you. Yeah. You know, I put the time and effort in knowing it's only not going to last. Connection requires action. Mm -hmm. A lot of hearts on uh, Elizabeth's comment. Uh, folks get offended when you ask, well, why do you want to connect? If it's to expand your network, fine. If you say that start selling your services, you no know, go for me. You Amen. know what I found <laughs> is most people aim too low instead of higher when they're talking about connections. 
right? Because most people don't understand what a connection is or what it's going to do. And in most cases, people look at it like a lottery ticket. Well, if I meet this person and they remember me or they give me a referral, no, it has to get deeper for it to be a connection. Yes. All, all you have is a number initially. That's all you have. You don't have a person. You don't have a relationship. And that's why I always say I'm not connecting with anybody I wouldn't immediately have a phone call with right after. Mm -hmm. Right? Because if I'm not going to extend it, what am I setting them up thinking that they're going to get something that they're, they're probably won't? Uh, back to you, Kelly. What's your what's your new thoughts? Yeah, well, so many <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> um, I think you know connecting sometimes can also be well. One, I do think one hundred percent it's authentic. The, this whole thing and this happens on social media, whether it's LinkedIn or not, um, it is people. And like Christy was mentioning about the mask, people acting like they think they need to be in order to connect with certain people. Or when I connect with this person. I'm going to get this from them um, instead of, because that's not a connection. Take, taking something from others and, and, and repurposing it as your own or for your own, for your, for yourself, for your own ego, your own matrix, whatever it is, um, just your own agenda. Like that's not a connection. And, mm -hmm. and I think people forget that. And everyone knows, and I think I just did a post recently, the, the pitch slap, needs to stop. Like I cannot, I will unfollow you. I will unconnect <laughs> if you start pitch slapping me right away. Like it's, I, I, that's not a connection. You're just looking to sell your thing and you're not really looking to network and connect. You're just, you're just trying to cast your net broadly enough and see how many you can, can catch in it. Um, and then the other thing that, that came to me while, while you all were talking and through the comments was, we can connect with people sometimes and not even realize it in the sense of we make an impact by being who we are and we don't know until later. And an example that, that came to me while you were talking was I, a couple years ago or a few years ago, had someone reach out to me via email, wasn't through LinkedIn and asked me to be a judge at the AMAs, the uh, American Marketing Association and it was their 25th anniversary at, at their gala here local in Phoenix. And I, of course, was like, uh, yeah, that sounds super rad. Um, but I was like, I'm just curious, why am I being asked to do this? Because um, I knew it was personal email. So somebody along the way, and it didn't, it wasn't, it was definitely a personal email. And the person wrote back and said, I met you eight years ago. And I remember you, and, and this is a gal with a staffing agency, Staffing Strong in Phoenix, are awesome. Um, and she said, I remember how you treated every single candidate that came in and how they felt when they left. And she said, I was just so impressed by how you were with people and it stuck with me. And then of course on, on LinkedIn, she just followed my career you know, and would notice when, when things changed. And she just said, I just thought this would be a, a a great thing for you because it, it, you just stood out to me. And of course, when you get something like that, you're like, dang, I had no idea like that, that, that even made an impact on someone. And that probably just goes to the whole thing of like, who are you when nobody's looking sort of thing, but you do make connection and impact on other people. And same thing, doing LinkedIn lives. I've had people reach out to me that I haven't seen in 10 years <laughs> or more and be like, oh my God, I see you in my feed all the time. What are you doing? And hey, how can we how can we help one another? And those are the connections too, right? You don't need to connect with people necessarily that can buy your thing, your widget, your service, whatever it is. I might know somebody though that may help you, but I need to know you. I don't mind doing an introduction, but if I'm ever gonna do like a true endorse, I need to know you and then truly know you and believe in you. Um, because again, kind of to wrap back around before I hand it back to Beverly, is take the time to know who that person is. Because, and I know I've said this on other shows, believe people when they show you who they are the first time. Um, because they will eventually show you who they are. And, and it's okay that not all connections work out because they don't. And that's, that's perfectly fine. So on that final note, I'm going to toss it back over to you. Beverly. 
<laughs> you said so much and it's all wonderful. Uh, but I'm going right back to the feeling again. Um, just what you said, you know, it's the Maya Angelou quote that I'm sure everybody knows. People will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. That's connection. They will forget you. So when you're coming on to somebody with your salesy stuff, or I want to get to know you, and this is what I have, you know, it's so in your face. Yeah. And everybody's doing that at social media. You know, it's, and, and you can see it. And we have all kinds of influencers that are teaching you how to do even more and more of this. Mm -hmm. And what happens is it, you get inundated with this insincerity. And how do you feel? You feel that they want your money. Yeah. <laughs> and that is scary. Everybody has to feel in control. Not that people are grabbing things from you. So if you do anything everywhere, like with and we do, whenever we connect with people, we are doing something. We are saying something. And what we are saying impacts them. Mm -hmm. How do we make somebody feel? We may disagree with what they said. That could be anybody. It could be the mechanic in the garage. It could be anybody. But if you have a bad day, how do you make somebody else feel? Are you going to be just getting what you want and walking out there? Think of that. You're connecting every day. You have the opportunity to literally make somebody's day. And that they, they will remember that. And then guess what? They will say, who is that person and what did she do? Yeah. And it's from there you're establishing just that connection without sales, without, tell, without wanting to get somebody in one way or another to close a deal. Those days are so over. You mm -hmm. know, when you had that hawker on the street selling whatever, that's mm -hmm. over. We have Amazon today, right? We don't need the connections. We can buy anything <laughs> online. But if you are selling a service, mm -hmm. you want to know who that person is. You want to know, you know, yes. not only what they are selling, but what is their credibility? And can I relate to that person? And will that person let me down? Mm -hmm. And it's all out there. Everything is transparent. Amen. And so, and, and that's in the office too. If you're going to be skipping a day and then posting on Instagram about what a great weekend you had, guess what? People know. Yeah. People aren't fools. And they will disconnect from you right away. So we have to watch ourselves all the time. And the only way to do it is just to be honest. We are who we are. And if you're going to skip a day, ask for that day. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, people will not trust you. That's the disconnect. Mm -hmm. And what ha we connect very slowly, often, quickly, and get hurt. But the bottom line is we disconnect just as fast. And so in this great, big, aggressive world, we also have to not be aggressive, not be hungry. You know, and I have never, like I said, I never worked corporate, but I worked for people in corporate, believe me. And what happens is everybody's human. Everybody wants something. But the main thing they want is also to be liked. And that's the, the biggest animal in the office or just the timid little girl in the corner. Everybody is looking to be connected somehow yeah. and just to be liked and if you're kind that's the first thing for anyone just be kind yes. take the brain out of your head and look to somebody else too what is everybody's going through stuff every single person online here is going through stuff yes. LinkedIn is not is about connecting for business hello it is yes. however if you continue to get salesy Oh. No, <laughs> just slowly wait. And you know, if you like that person, then you check the profile. 
then you check what they did, who they are. Can you relate? Can you connect? Yeah. And that's what's so wonderful about today. Yeah. But I think anyone that's selling, and that should be everybody, because everybody, whether we like it or not, is in sales. I yep. think we have to understand that, or to have confidence in ourselves, that right. if you're authentic, people know. And yes. if you're authentic, they will come to people who are also authentic. Nobody likes to be cheated. Nobody. And I, I think, so, sorry, in my, my little yeah. interjection is, I think it's so important just to exemplify here. People don't buy your product, your thing, your widget. They buy you. Yes. And, and, and that's such a misconception of they think, you know, oh, if I give all this, this logical fact of how awesome my product is or my service, that people are going to want to buy it. That's actually a turnoff to people. They buy yeah. every buying decision is made on emotion. All the all the logic is used to rationalize following the purchase has nothing to do with it. So if we're not connecting with the person, because I can go buy your product, your service, your thing, likely from a hundred thousand other people. <laughs> so if I'm not connecting with you on a on a human level and feel that trust and confidence, I'm not going to want your thing, no matter how great it is. Um. So sorry, that was my little in interruption digression. I think we really got um, a much better understanding of the roles one can and should play. And you always have to stay proactive. You always have to try to get in front of things instead of chasing something. I think to everybody's point, again, and that's why words are important, it's to some people selling is really making people aware or promoting. Mm -hmm. so, you know, what you're really doing is influencing people. But here's the key. Some cases you're better off slowing down when you're yep. pressed for time yep. instead of speeding up. The person you're talking to could care less about your mortgage payment this month or what you need. That's not the reason they, they're getting involved. The other thing is, you don't sell a product or a service, you promote a relationship, mm -hmm. right? And that's where you can get the feeling from is, and, and you know, it's really hard for some people to say, to qualify, Yeah. we need to do this. And everybody's like, well, I'm just, you. first of all, I don't like spending money. And when I spend money, I'm the one who should determine the terms of what I'm doing. Uh, but if you think and believe that what you have has supreme value, mm -hmm. someone says no, they're actually re-gifting it to the person who mostly deserves it and will, will appreciate it. So if you know you have limited time and limited space for people who don't align with you because it is dating, but it's on a more professional level, <laughs> so many people people's connections and say, wow, that's a person I need to connect with. But I'll tell you one thing, don't settle for what you have and then determine that's what you have to work with. Right. Right. What I decided is I started seeing a pattern. And uh, to give an example, which has really been a, a big influence this week for me, is a gentleman named Bob Berg inter interacted with me. And he's uh, the author of the Go-Giver book series, which is considered among the top 20 uh, books with Napoleon Hill and Dale Carnegie uh, because of the show or something. Mm -hmm. And he's actually coming on two, uh, two weeks from uh, Friday tomorrow. And because of that, I started watching his YouTube stuff. Yeah. And understanding, because he's uh, not only a, a Hall of Fame speaker that kind of aligned with Bob Proctor, and actually in The Go-Giver, the main character is modeled after Bob Proctor. And it's a parable type book. It's only, I, I did it on Audible in about two hours. But the point is, is that I said, hey, people are seeing this as really valid because people are getting attracted to the show for the show. Mm -hmm. 
right? <laughs> you know, he's spoken in front of 15,000 people, but everybody, including him, needs feedback, needs relevant audiences. You know, it's like a comedy club where you take your act on the road and you see how good it does before you go into the main arena. And so what yesterday I did, which was unusual, is I, I filtered 50 podcasters in my, you know, I took my 37,000 connections, just put USA, dropped it to 12,000, put in a title, which was podcaster and got 362. Mm. And out of 362, I went one by one through all of them and, okay. sent, and, and sent 50 invitations out yesterday nice. to have a Zoom because I thought, hey, if you're already communicating, you're already a podcaster, mm -hmm. what you're missing is the video, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You're missing live streaming. So why not go after or be attracted to people who are already where you're at or beyond? Mm -hmm. Then going too low and, and trying to get people to do things they have never done before, right? Don't believe they can do. And that's where learning from others in the pace that you can, like being in the audience. You can just listen. You don't even have to be known. And then if it starts to resonate, you know, then you can do a little bit more, but it's really at what level people have. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, and these, there are two other people I talked to are really significantly successful on LinkedIn says you have to have three demographics for your target person, right? So one gentleman who is in Bangkok says they have to be in Thailand. They have to be a family business because those are the ones he can do the best at selling. And, and they have to be something else, right? And then somebody in New York had three uh, titles that were important for, for that target. So sometimes you ask yourself, who is the person or persons I want to start working with or talking to mm -hmm. and go into your connections? And I, you know, and I found every one of the 50 I had, I had a communication before, but most of them were 2018, 2020, 2021. And I thought to myself, when they met me then mm -hmm. is not who I am today. And what I offered them is not what I can offer today. So a lot of times new is good, but re reclaiming always what's always been there. And no, and you know, just yesterday I got I got four telephone appointments immediately. Yeah. You know, and I'll probably get another four. And pretty soon now eight people. And here's one more thing. You can use things as stepping stones to other things. Yeah. And everybody wants to know context. Right. So if Bob Berg comes on the show and everybody's like, wow, Bob Berg came on the show. It didn't change the show. But if it's good enough for him. Right. It's calling exactly. Card. Yeah. And that's why I always take the best two shows of the week as part of the invitation, because I always say, hey, this could be an opportunity to be a co-host here. Mm -hmm. uh, have a Zoom. And by the way, here's the last two recent shows for your review. Yeah. Right. And when they say, wow, that's a great show, because showing is better than telling, mm -hmm. taking the initiative and anything that came out of that 50 invitation session, which took me probably about an hour and a half. Everything mm -hmm. was templated. So it was really cut paste. And it, the message was the same mm -hmm. because the opportunity was the same is how proud of you when you move the extra mile. Where you, you know, you get to a position where I am, where I'm always happy, but never satisfied. You know, if nothing changes, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy. But, you know, why not get more of something and not be dependent? And even dating is much better when you already have dates. Right. If, 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 if you have, if you have, I'm just saying if you have three <laughs> friends that you love being with and and you know what i mean i'm not talking too deep of a relationship <laughs> the next person that you're not that hungry for or desperate for yeah right so if you're comfortable and you're and you're stable and happy with yourself 
that also shines, right? Because when I was even looking at Bob yesterday on his YouTube, one thing I saw, this guy is on fire. He is so happy. He's so excited. He's he's so in your face. His hands are flying all over. And maybe that's what made him a Hall of Famer. Yeah. But I said to my exactly. son, studying him has now allowed me to take parts of him and incorporate it in my package or whatever. So we'll get back to Beverly as soon as we cover all these comments. Maria says no. Not necessary. If you follow your gut, you can't go wrong. You know, I think every day is a new day. Every situation's a new situation. Absolutes don't always work too well. I'm like, okay, where am I? Where are they? What is involved here? Sometimes you're a little freer. Sometimes you, you decide to tighten up a bit. Uh, Christy Howard says, active listening, observing, and listening to that gut of yours. Yes. That, your, your, your heart won't fail you as much as your brain. Oh, right. no. <laughs> Your brain is just, yeah. you know, yeah. 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 Oh, no. you know, and I think you, when it says something, it's because you need to hear what it has to say, you know, yeah. and it's easy to discount. Elizabeth says getting to know people today can be similar to dating. It is. I mean, it's oh, like, it you know, who serves you? Who do you serve? And then how can you make it better? Because by now, everybody knows what better could be what the hope in the past was that maybe was never fulfilled, but you know someone out there is doing it and can do it. And maybe now you can help them. Mm -hmm. You can be the one who can shore things up. So there's possibilities. Shauna, I haven't seen you before, but thank you so much for coming. Great to see you. Welcome any thoughts and comments you might have on connecting. Maria says, being in the Netherlands, the networking associations are not my tribe. It's all about me. Me, I do not like that energy. Thinking of creating something else. It's always must be give and take. You know, you got to be able to put the other person first for a longer period of time than most people do in order to really allow them to open up and share with you who they are over time. There's too much in and out, in or out, you know, versus, hey, okay, got to know you. Let's see where it goes. Mm -hmm. You know, unless someone has to make a decision, don't. You know, be happy in the process. Elizabeth Balloon says most people want to connect as friends, but I feel there is a fear of rejection. If you got enough activity, enough people, when someone says I can't make it, it's like thank you very much. I needed that hour back. You yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> well, I, Attitude. You know, or I got something to do, and you know, and sometimes it's like, hey, it was 50-50 <laughs> when I made the appointment. Congrats. <laughs> Connecting is correcting my thoughts. Thanks for a start of a good day on the way. Uh, thank you so much, Dennis. You're just a, a lovely person. I think that's the most important thing about relationships. And I've had so many and, and so many wonderful people from Gretchen to Jenny Maxwell to Tara, everybody, Christy, uh, the people who were here that aren't, the people who keep coming back who are, and the people who leave, come back, leave, come back. And that's the way it should be you know, is you want to allow people to get as strong, as independent, as free as possible, because they'll come back to you with their discoveries, right? Free them up, let them go out and be the, the scout and come back with the. And then there's ratcheting up with that. So you can't lose by helping others. Uh, connections, okay. build with trust. Uh, most people aim too low for sure. And that's why Everybody knows I could be doing better. I'm better than what I than what I could be. I mean, there's possibilities. What do I want to do? And action is everything. Taking that first step, saying I'll reach out to 40 people who I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. You know, don't have enough action. Start pumping the prim priming the pump. You know, start investing in time and effort in other people because how many people reach out to you with legitimate offers? Mm -hmm. I just want to get to know you better. So can we have a Zoom? And if you just said that, most yes. people say, sure. But if you say, I got this nifty, wifty, yes. new, new way of getting lead generation and, and no. also. Bye-bye. <laughs> and they don't yeah. even know it, you know? And if they do, yeah. that's an awful existence. No, I'm going to intrude and bother 300 people today to get two things sold. And I got to go yeah. back and do it again tomorrow and the next day. 
And that's assuming I don't get thrown out of here because yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a point where you're, you're, you're uh, uh, depending on the generosity for someone not to report you, you know, and a lot of people will. Real connections equals with conversations, support each other professionally. And after a while, if you know, like, and trust somebody, what do you want to do with them? Mm -hmm. right? At a certain point, it's like you called me up 20 times. Were you ever going to go out? Right. I mean, are we going to meet at Starbucks one day? Is, is that in the exactly? Car? You know, yeah. or are you just going to sit here and, and, and talk about talk and LinkedIn a similar networking event. Most of the time, you don't know 99% of the people in a room, but everyone is there to make connections, get referrals and grow their business. Well, if you're there for you, you're starting out wrong. Right. If, if, if your goal is to get before you give or more than you give. Mm -hmm. You're already creating a bad uh, dynamic to a relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're offering cookies and milk and, and, and to anybody who wants it, uh, and you're out there providing value and service, and I think in Bob's presentation, it, money always follows the activity. It never precedes it. Mm -hmm. Right. You do what you do. You know, is right. You're helping people and people give them credit. will feel that, I think, to, to Beverly's point, Absolutely. you know, the, 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 no one's looking for a genius. Actually, with chat and Google, you're never going to match up with, with their ability to state figures and facts. Dennis says, agree, believe in people who show up, not off. So true. Debbie, connection through authenticity and transparency. It's so rare that yeah. when you see yeah. it. And when you get it, you know it. And especially yeah. if it happens over time, anybody can be anything for a little while, you know, but every day could they be making this up and why? So I think to Kelly's point, when people tell you and show you who they are, that's enough. Mm -hmm. You don't use it. Don't, don't, don't ask for more information. I have a very strong connection with someone I met on the show. I'm so grateful. I love that. That's perfect. You know, a person often often meets his destiny on the road he took to avoid it. That's so true, too. Uh, Kristen says, networking is how I've created my career since I left teaching. Um, Maria comes back with the other day someone sent an invite on LinkedIn and so purpose he thought I could help him emerge in the U.S. market with him. I could, but his approach was off the rails. You know, so many people don't know how they shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, we still have to have that chat. Great, Dennis. Uh, very strong comments today. Some of us still prefer shopping in line and not online because it helps create yeah. local jobs and connections for sure. Yeah. You, know, you can do this and do that. There's no Absolutely. one. You have my number, beautiful. Maria, people don't want to be sold anymore. The consumer is so, so much more educated. They have more options, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah put up with stuff. Agree, being proactive is much better than conactive. Elizabeth, uh, <laughs> read, go give her a completely different twist to connecting with people. It's yeah. never about you. Uh, and there are so many good books and so many good videos that you can access. So it's there for you. It's not like in the past where you had to drive to the library or have an encyclopedia at home. We all have features and benefits that people buy into first. Uh, Dennis, Agree, a good pattern could be a good pat on your back where you're at, for sure. You know, people love to be recognized. That open mentality is not found in the Netherlands, which is a pity. Well, it's a big country. <laughs> it's got some of it there. Um, I'm looking to work with people in New York City. Well, then you got to start searching and <laughs> for New York City people. You know, you got to tell people what you're looking for and let them come to you versus having them see you and then reach out to you. It, it doesn't work as well. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna finish up with a comment here. Agree more connections, help avoid more corrections. Uh, with that, uh, Kelly, I mean, we're almost, I can't believe it, 44 minutes into the show. Wow, wow. wow. <laughs> it's like flown. I mean, it always does, but um... I mean, my gosh, so much to say and all of that. And and first, I want to remind everyone, do connect with everyone that's here in the chat or here yes. on the channel. Um, friendly reminder. Um, but wow, so many things that that came to mind going going through all that. And again, it goes back to the whole thing about connecting with people and and being transparent, authentic, and, and vulnerable. 
And I think the example or something that came to mind and um, one of the things on, you know, and, and not a shameful plug, but on the awesome journey is an example. I wasn't sure how easy it was going to be to book people. <laughs> I, I really had no idea. And we're booked till January. And I don't think one person that we've talked to, and it's revisiting connections, exactly like you said, Don, who do we already have in our network? Who do we think aligns with what we're trying to do here? Not one person that we've spoken to has said no. And I 100% believe the reason is, is because it is such our why and our passion. And, and we're so authentic and transparent with what we're trying to do that people relate to it. And a gentleman we spoke to yesterday, what I loved that he said, because, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't, I don't pitch like the show. I'll flat out say, this is why I started it. This is what I envision. I'm organically growing it just like this show. Same exact thing. Don and I, since the beginning of the year, have watched it organically change and then shift and, 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 and roll with it and observe what happens. Um, but what, what this gentleman said um, it, during this conversation is, one, he loved the why we were doing this and, and what our why was with it. But he said, you guys hit on three big things for me. And the one that stands out for this conversation is he said, wouldn't it be great if we all left each other better than we found each other? Like leave people better than when you found them. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I love that. And, and really what a great world it would be. And, and that should be the approach, right? How can we help each other? And that is why I think when, when we have those people who are trying to sell us and that it's all about me, that it's just like next, like you're, you're not ready yet. <laughs> you're, you're just yeah. not. And, and I, I want to um, say that, or I want to exemplify something. Everybody's using this same formula of of lead gen on LinkedIn, the, the same thing. And like, I think it was Maria that said that somebody was trying to sell her something that had nothing to do with her. I get that all the time too. And it annoys me yeah. to no end. Um, but it's like, and, and I even had someone and I wrote him back and said, you know, hey, clearly you didn't read my profile because that has nothing to do with what I do. And he was like, oh, thank you for letting me know. I'm so sorry. Clearly, we didn't target it correctly. And I thought, good for you for taking ownership that it was a boo-boo. <laughs> well, three days later, I get the next the next email in the string. And it's like, dude, you need to take me out of the, out of the lead gen. Um, but when people say they're casting that net, and I've had clients mm -hmm. say this to me, they're like, but we're getting we're getting people, we're getting appointments from it. Yes. And I said, okay, but what about the measurement of the people that you're turning off and missing? Because I believe that you are losing opportunity by doing the pitch slap right away. You know, it, you're, you're following a formula and I get that people will eventually respond and eventually you'll be able to maybe turn a few into a call. But how many have you left out of the equation? I mean, that's just and you can't really put that into um, a, a matrix because I don't know how you track that. But I do believe that because I'm like, I, I've, as many people as I talk to on the regular who say that, oh, as soon as I see that come right away, like I'm delete that conversation or I unblock or I uh, unfollow because it had nothing to do with, you know, either my profile or, or, or what I do for a living. So I don't know. I just think that's a question that people should ask themselves, though. Like how many are opportunities are you possibly missing out on by doing that? Because it feels... It doesn't feel good. And people don't like things that don't feel good. I mean, it's just basic human nature. Um, yeah. So there's my little soapbox for this round, Beverly. <laughs> What's your thoughts? Well, yeah, you said it again. You said it again. And it all goes back, Kelly, to authenticity. If they were authentic, they wouldn't come on as your friend. They would come on and say, I want your money. Okay? Because yeah. that is what they want. OK, and this is what's so wonderful about LinkedIn Live. And I intend on doing my podcast on, on live through LinkedIn and everything else. Yeah, because, yes, it is everywhere. Um, however, it's not through my group and my group and LinkedIn and everywhere else. Everyone is connecting. And in the group, for instance, as far as I'm concerned, maybe 
10, 20 people know each other personally. And there's like over 5,000, whatever, in the group on Facebook. And the fact is they connect with each other every day. And they connect with me. And so what happens is there are people out there who know who I am, what I do. But the goal is not about that. That's about saying good morning to somebody that perhaps has nobody to say good morning to. And they're saying good morning to everybody else and they know each other. And that's what connection is. And that's what, you know, a, a, a podcast is. And that's what a live is. Unless, of course, it's a sales podcast and it's specifically about selling, in which case you know what you're getting. You're authentic. But you're not going to slide in something, buy my stuff, in, unless somebody wants to receive what mm-hmm. you're going to be giving because that to your point will yeah. turn people off mm-hmm. and your agenda should be to serve it doesn't matter if you're selling widget <laughs> you have to be able to say hello how are you how how will this widget fit in your day in your box whatever it is not yes. to say this is the best widget in the world yes it's really just be incentive with who you are and you know what Sales will come. Don't be so threatened with being who you are. That's the thing. Everybody's trying to copy someone else who was successful. And, you know, if if you're going to be standing on YouTube and you happen to be really, you know, a narcissistic personality and you love to fly and your hands are going and you have thousands and thousands of (laughs) followers out there, you know, good for you because they're being authentic. That's right. However, if you're going to try to copy their model, yeah, you're going to fail. That's you what know, it I, I think, Just I be think, you. Yeah, and I think that's so terrific. You know, with that point, and it really does come down to trust, oh, and it takes time and experience to build trust. But when you have it, when someone shares something with you, it's not salesy. Mm-hmm. It's, it's building awareness. It's show, and also people have to give other people the opportunity to have a better opportunity to spend t- more time with you in a personalized way. Because someone can say, you know, to Kelly or Beverly, "Man, I am so impressed. I admire seeing you all the time, and I get so much value." But it's a, it's an appetizer. How can I end up going to dinner and having a main dish together? right? And and go from there. The other big element I think that everybody should be aware of is how are you evolving, mm. right? Because I see people who are doing the same or less yeah. at a certain point because either they don't know better, don't care better, or are just letting time and, and the universe deliver whatever they're looking for versus really competing against yourself to say, how can I be better today than yesterday, but not as good as I'm going to be tomorrow, right? right? How do I add one little brick to the wall? And over 400 days of doing this, you get a pretty strong wall. And every show, if you do it every day, is three-tenths of 1% of your total annual shows. So it's one-third of a percent, (laughs) which which means that no one show is make it or break it. Right. If, if the video is not wa- working, the audio, so what? Because right. you know what? Everybody gets a rain check tomorrow, yep. Yep. right? It's only when you got one event every six months, and if something's not right, boy, there was a lot of anticipation, yep. a lot of preparation. So why leave things to chance? Because quantitatively, you can overcompete. Qualitatively, yep. for sure you can. And if you have plenty of of activity, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, you can go out and walk until you can't walk anymore. Yeah. Right? So how many times do you walk relative to that? You can do so much more. And actually, it's tracking yourself in a a comfortable way. Time to get off of the computer. You know, I'm not, I'm I'm getting out here. Time time to start thinking of family. Start to think about food. And all of a sudden, you're the master of your future. And that's why people yearn to be independent people, is they don't want permission. They don't need filters between them and what they do. 
And live streaming is so valuable because why are you on LinkedIn in the first place? To be seen and heard. Well, then what are you getting into? A little bumper card that gives you a chance to post a thought, hoping someone will comment and like it, and then you'll comment and like back to them? Right. What is that going to distinguish and differentiate yourself? And you know, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, things start really happening. Yeah. When, like, hey, I got nowhere oh. from here. I got nothing to lose. And I'm humble and appreciate everything and everybody for who they are and what they are. And when you can aim high, but never diminish someone who, however you measure is lower. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Everybody's been there. And if you haven't been there, prepare to go there. Mm -hmm. right? uh, that kindness serves you well. So it's uh, 55 minutes. Let me, uh, let me really catch up. Yeah. Uh, Wherever I, that I always keep something on the table so I know that uh, where I'm supposed to be. Okay, here we are. Uh, Debbie says, I'm always happy but never satisfied. It's a great attitude because you can't lose with it. You always want more, but if you never had any more, you're totally blessed to have what you have and who you have. I was, never was a dater, but good point. Uh, Natalie's here. Natalie's just a great artist. Always. Yeah. Yes, I love her posts. Yes. The beautiful artwork you put out there, uh, honestly. I love this conversation. All of you aligned so well. I'm painting so limited comments. But I'm enjoying your insights. Well, you know, it's that Thank you. heartfelt belonging that Dennis and Ashif and Debbie and I, everybody, Maria, everybody. you know, that brings to the table that makes their words more meaningful, more valuable. It's not someone just throwing some out to catch something. Yeah. Somebody's attention because this is truly a marathon. Unless you're prepared to run it long distance and, and be here, uh, you're not investing time properly. Uh, Elizabeth says, Ashif, energy, great point. I'll try to get to the ones. Uh, time does fly when we do what we love, is still true. Thanks for reminding yeah. us. Yeah. Debbie says, let's all leave each other better than we found each other. Drop yeah. the mic. Yeah. Her. Ashif comes back with, Connections are golden pathways to everywhere, you know, and work them. You know, if you went out and got dough, you'd make something out of it, right? You'd work it. <laughs> Maybe make some pizza. It's like when you go for a walk, pick up stuff that not naturally there and leave the neighborhood better than you found it. Walk the talk, you know, and be proud of yourself. Leslie's here. Leslie will be here Saturday with Catherine again. Leslie. Stopping in a bit late today. Always glad to see you, Leslie. Leslie is a yes. genuine giver. Uh, and Leslie has said she knows Bob and everybody else. Uh, so great to see you. Elizabeth comes back with Maria. Okay. Leslie, bigger comment. Yes, at some point, stop going for the free stuff and begin investing. <laughs> in How long do we do, go on repeating the same year over and over again? So true. People yeah. will throw away their time but save that last penny in their pocket, you know? And somehow that tells you who that person is, who, who, who won't invest in themselves or look for freebies because you're never going to get big by acting small and thinking small. And that's just the way it is. How you set out is how you're going to build a foundation from it. Agree, evolve, not dissolve. Last one we have, agree, live streaming is so much better and more positive than live screaming. Um, <laughs> And if, you know, if you're authentic, if you're honest and true, you want everybody to see every blemish. You know, yeah. you want it to be like, hey, nothing hidden here, no alternative motives. Yeah. And I value my time and my integrity as much as I value yours. Okay. Right. So why even put that up as, as a challenge? Right. Because if you can't trust somebody, you don't believe in them. That's enough. You don't need more reasons because there's a fresh person right behind them who you can get what you want. And the thing is, you should never be always searching. Once you find what you need and want, now get together and connect in doing things together. Mm -hmm. you know, I know, like Kelly did a podcast. You know, I've been on Kelly's show. I've been on Harvey's show. I've been on everybody's show. And you know what it shows is people are growing. And now this is more like an airport. 
right? Where you can learn to fly, you can use it for a runway, and then you can come back and be part of a group of flyers. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's something to that. So final words, Beverly? Oh, wow. Okay, Don. Uh, my final words really are, look how connecting his thought up. Just think about it, right? If we were all alone, would we have risen at all? No, we keep connecting. We keep going higher. I connected with you, Dawn. I met Kelly. She was on my podcast. I've sent other people to you, Kelly. I hope you've gotten them. It keeps on going. Now, yeah. is that called networking? You can call it whatever you like. Mm -hmm. I hate the word networking, honestly. It's just, I know someone that can help you. I know someone who, and that's it. Yeah. And so I think to your point, Don, when you were saying you went out there and targeted specific demographics, absolutely. You cannot serve everybody, but you can certainly serve your connections, which are your tribe and to keep on connecting. And if somebody does not connect back, don't take it personally, just keep on moving on, keep connecting and you will grow higher. So that's just it. And never forget how you can make someone feel. They'll remember you forever. Amen. That, that is so wonderful, Beverly. Thank you so much. And Kelly? Yeah, well, I have to go back to just the whole thing of connecting. The reason that every single one of us are here today is because of Don Cohen. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that yeah. is just a true story. You have connected so many people, created so many incredible relationships. And I mean, true relationships. Um, and for that, I'm completely grateful. And and I, in no way, thank God, I don't compare networking to speed dating because that sounds like terrible. <laughs> um, but how I always end, first of all, thank you both. It was wonderful to have this conversation with you guys today. And thank you, everybody, for being here. And until I'm back next time or until Dawn's here, go out and shine so bright that others can't help but shine too. Well, thank you so much, Beverly and Kelly. And, you know, in conclusion, we're, we only know where we are, and it's only truly been six to eight months since we all came together. And believe me, if you go back eight months ago or five months ago to shows then, they're, they're not anything like these are. So my, my thought is how much better in six months or a year can we be with the first six months being get to know each other, get to work with each other, and I don't look at networking as being the word, but co-working is really a key word. Who do you want to co-work with? You know, network tends to be what are you doing, having conversations, I know you, you know me, versus, hey, let's roll up our sleeves, and you don't have to do dramatic things. Let's have a show together. Let's be on a panel. And here's the other thing is once you get in orbit, your show becomes a magnet, but then everybody on your show gets attracted to everybody else's show. Yes. So if Kelly has somebody who's a man, this person was unbelievable. Yes. It's like, hey, I love to book them. And I look at our, our situation now in so many different ways as almost a comedy club circuit. Right? <laughs> you know, like a, a Jerry Seinfeld will go to seven, eight comedy clubs before he ends up at Caesar's Palace, right? They take him on the road try out their jokes, visit audiences that they know are definitely a positive influence because people want to be recognized, but even very successful people want to know they're, they're relevant, that they're recognized. Mm -hmm. When they get in front of an audience yeah. like this, that you can't even cover the comments, that's a breath of fresh air. So many people come here, and I think to Beverly and Kelly's point, with their whole presentation, Never visited a show, never understood an audience. <laughs> yes. hey, this is what I'm, I, I go to go to market with. And they don't know how badly they embarrass themselves, but more importantly, what an opportunity they missed mm -hmm. by yeah. not giving grace to the audience, to the show, and yes. to everybody else. But that's how we can all learn. Yeah. The most successful people sometimes are the least relevant because they forgot what it was when they got first rejected, when they did their first thing, and now because of entitlement or whatever, but we're fresh and we know what we don't want to be. And we also know what we can be. So with that, thank you all so much. 
I can't thank you enough. Come back tomorrow and I'll share with you. Tomorrow is a new gentleman, David Wolf, uh, who's, who, who's just going to be great. Like I say, Saturday, we got Catherine and Leslie. And then Sunday, we've got Harvey and Kelly again. And then Jeffrey Lackey, who was here okay. yesterday, coming back Monday. Then Beverly, a new two people, Lorraine Duncan, who's just unbelievable. And oh, Chris I know he like. Okay, and Christopher Salem, who knows Bob. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of new people. My, my last thing is my fear when I sent 50 invitations out yesterday was not that people reject me, but what if 42 people say, let's have a call? <laughs> <laughs> and I just decide, hey, let it fly. So with that, have a beautiful day.